Hey, what's up? I'm Vienno and this is my 16th, 16th video tutorial on D3. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on in this video. First of all, as you can see, I've uh, I've added in a new skin to my text ed editor. I hope it's uh, the code is still visible and readable. If not, just uh, go crazy in the comment section. Uh, so uh, the things I want to show you in this video are, well, it's three additional layouts. And those are uh, the cluster layout, the pack layout, and well, a bubble chart, which is basically a pack layout but uh, customized. So, first of all, the real quick one I want to show you is if we go back to our uh, tree layout, which we this is the one we created in uh, the last video. If we take a look at the layout right here, you can see that I've added. An additional node, uh, Mr. Mr. X here, which uh, has the same depth as Sylvia and David, but no children. So in the uh, in the uh, in the data, it looks like this. Uh, we could, wh whenever we have data like this, we can display it in one of two ways. We can either display it using the tree layout, uh, like I'm doing right now, where the depth is preserved. Or we can use the cluster layout, which takes all the leaf nodes, uh, that is, all the nodes that do not have children, and place them uh, at the end of our uh, layout. So I can just show you real quick if we just, um, yeah, it's just this word actually that we have to change um, from the tree layout to the cluster layout, and D3 D3 will recalculate the position of Mr. X so that he ends up here instead of here. All right, that was the first uh, quick thing I wanted to show you. So let's move on to the second one, which is uh, the pack layout. The pack layout looks like this. And uh, it, it has a hierarchical structure as well. Uh, the root node is the big uh, circle that contains everything else and it goes down to uh, the leaf nodes which are the smallest one uh, once right here and when when um, well a difference between the tree layout and um, the pack layout is that the radius of the circles uh, well let me put it this way in the pack layout the radius of the circles can can be used in one of two ways. We can either use it to actually display some numeric value if if we have some uh, numbers in our data, or we can just use it to display the node depth. So the way I've been uh, the way I set up the data for this example, if we head over to my data.json, I've added this uh, value property to each node, and I just uh, made the uh, uh, the root node I supplied it with the largest value and the, l the values the values sorry are descending uh, the further down we come down the hierarchy but we could use this to store uh, for example each person's age or whatever okay so um, we're running out of time let's uh, begin coding uh, first of all we want to create our pack layout and uh, just as before we just create it like that d3.layout.pack and let's set the size and actually in this tutorial tutorial I wanna store the dimensions in variables so it's a bit more uh, easier easier to keep track of so we'll set the size of the uh, the pack layout to the width and height variable. Just make some room here. Um, also, we'll give each each circle a padding of 10 pixels. And this is a method that belongs to or are provided uh, to us by the uh, layout uh, pack layout. Right, okay, so um, let's load up some data. We'll load our 
my data.json file, set up our callback function, and uh, ooh, that shouldn't be there. All right, so um, just as in with the tree layout, the pack layout provides us with, I say pro provide us with a lot, uh, but never mind. It provides us with a nodes method, and the nodes method in in the pack layout has uh, pretty much the same function as in the tree layout. So if we console log the nodes and take a look at them, you can see that we are returned with uh, an object for each node. Uh, and uh, it contains the uh, X and Y properties, name, depth, children, and also um, two additional properties. And what they're doing uh, in simplified term is uh, just setting the radius of each or, or the size of each uh, circle. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the nodes uh, method of the pack layout. So we can continue just as with the tree layout to create, um, well, to bind some data. And we'll just uh, select everything with the class of node and the data will be provided by the nodes method. And um, enter as usual and we'll append a G element to each uh, node and well that is the node but and we'll give it a class of node and this is basically just the exact same uh, code as in the previous video so I'll just speed this up oh this is the messy part translate and append dx and uh, the comma and append dy and uh, finish off with that yeah okay so we have our g elements for each node now what we want to do is uh, append a circle the actual circle uh, so to each node append one circle and uh, let the radius and this is one difference between the, uh, the, the tree layout and the uh, pack layout and we'll let the radius be a function of the data so we'll return uh, dr as we saw earlier uh, the r property of the object and uh, we can give each uh, Oh, what am I? What am I doing? I'm tired. It's late. We'll give it a fill. Oh wow! I can't type. I should go to bed. So uh, we'll give them an opacity of 0 0.25 and a stroke. Let's give it a gray color. Obviously, I've prepared this so I know what to type but it's still messy and a stroke width to right so let's take a look at this okay so we have our circles um, each with their proper radius now we just want to add some text so let's append some text and the text will be a function of our data we'll just return t.name let's save right so um, there's a couple of things we need to do first of all we don't want to show uh, we don't want to show the names of we just want to show the names of the leaf nodes uh, the the childless nodes. So the way to do that is uh, really s 
really simple actually we just uh, you'll recognize this if you've worked with uh, JavaScript before but otherwise I'll just explain it to you real quick we'll do this um, so this is a short form for an if statement so what this means is if the node has children then set uh, set the the text to nothing otherwise uh, set the text to the name property so the question mark and the colon um, makes up this if statement if else statement so if we save this and refresh you can see that we only have uh, labels for the uh, the leaf nodes so let me pause for a second okay so once again we're in a hurry but uh, let me show you real quick how to turn this into a bubble chart um, so the, the only difference really uh, between this and a bubble chart is that we remove we only keep uh, the leaf nodes so the smallest circles we could do that in a complicated way using something called recursion but I won't go into that now I'll just uh, show you uh, another way of doing that I've prepared another set of data and yeah I was lazy I just called every object max but I I simply uh, created a data file composed of um, one one array well one root node and then an array of objects all at the same depth so if we go back to index.html and instead of loading my data.json we'll load my data to.json and uh, you can see that now we have all these all these nodes at the same depth but we want to get rid of this root node um, circle so we'll just have to create some functions so let's set the f let's make the fill a function of the data as well and we'll say return if it has children um, then return um, white else return steel blue let's save this and refresh right so we just have to get rid of the stroke and we'll just do the same thing here we'll make this a function and we'll say return if children then oh what was the okay if children then return white else return the grayish color let's save and refresh and we have a um, yeah a um, kind of a bubble chart here going on we could use a color scale on this to make it look better uh, but what we're showing here is um, just just the value property really uh, that's the value that we're visualizing so each of these um, right so I think that will do for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.